Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to News Dose. And uh, some bad news hit live service games. Things are not looking good for the future right now. And uh, anybody who's working on these type of games, I mean, they have to be biting their nails over what's happening currently in the industry. I mean, I've been talking about this for years and years, the mythical cash cow syndrome, if you will. Uh, but it appears that the industry is starting to hit a breaking point, including some big names as well and we're gonna dive into all of that today also a big xbox game might be further out than what some were maybe expecting or at least according to a new find that was spotted online as always though do make sure to hit those buttons below like subscribe and all that youtube stuff i greatly greatly appreciate it uh, but without further ado let's just go and jump right in news though starting off with minecraft and their various spin-offs this is something that mojang and xbox have tried to experiment with more and more over the last so many years and i think so far minecraft dungeons has been their really their best attempt yet i actually think that this is a great cooperative game that can be enjoyed by the entire family this is something that me and my family has enjoyed as well uh, it might not necessarily be as fleshed out as something like let's say Diablo but it's very accessible to all ages and that's very important for a franchise like Minecraft I'd say that it's kind of the equivalent of Xbox's Mario and you know as it turns out Minecraft Dungeons was a huge hit for them and they just announced that it surpassed 25 million unique players yeah that's pretty impressive right there so big congrats to Mojang but they are now moving on. They also announced that it will receive its final update this November, and they're quote-unquote moving on to new projects that continue to explore experiences in the Minecraft universe. So definitely expect more Minecraft spinoffs. Like I said, it's really just kind of Xbox's version of Mario. I'm not saying that it's like Mario. That's not what I'm trying to say here. I'm just talking about in terms of popularity and how they can kind of branch this series out with different spinoffs. Now the the question really just kind of becomes what are they going to do next so far they've done a dungeon crawling rpg and a strategy game that was a surprising choice but it'll be interesting to see what they do next and where they'll take the minecraft ip let me know what you all think about this though what genre would you like to see them explore next now, since we were talking about Nintendo franchises a moment ago, we do have a couple updates for them as well. I feel like they've been a little quiet here recently, actually, but if you're a Switch Online subscriber, you'll be pretty happy today, especially if you're in the expansion pack tier, because there's actually two big updates here. The first here is for all Switch Online subscribers because F-099 is getting a pretty sizable update. Nintendo revealed that it will get five additional maps including Red Canyon and then also Queen League will be added to the Grand Prix mode. So it's actually really nice to see continued support for this game. I know it's not necessarily the F-Zero experience that fans have been requesting, but it's still a cool project nonetheless, and I I've seen some people online that's genuinely, genuinely enjoyed this experience. So I'm glad to see Nintendo continue its support, and, and hey, if this game gets enough attention, maybe, just maybe, that'll be the spark for Nintendo to finally do something with this franchise. As for you expansion pack subscribers though, Kirby and Amazing Mirror is also available as of today. This is an old Game Boy Advance game and actually a pretty good one at that. It's a fun overall Kirby experience and pretty much like most GBA games, it's it's aged well thanks to its art style and just overall fun gameplay. So it's not just a nostalgia thing. You can still pick this game up today, play it, and have a lot of fun. Uh, what's more here though is that it does come included with some online features this time around that's one of the big perks of you know switch online so if you want to play it's multiplayer well that is an option as well again both of those updates are available as of today and hey that's perfect timing heading into the weekend all right so that was the good fun news of today's news dose uh, and as much as i don't like to talk about these type of things i'm gonna have to dial things back here because unfortunately Yesterday was a rough day for gaming, and the ramifications of this news could impact future games as well. We'll get into that more here in just a moment, but uh, what's happening here is that multiple studios were hit with major layoffs yesterday, uh, and there was another unfortunate game cancellation. The thing is, though, is that there's one common denominator here, and uh, that's that all three of these games that we're about ready to talk about are live service titles. Sega announced that they're canceling their upcoming multiplayer title, 
Hyenas. This is a live service project developed by Creative Assembly, and it was being described as a sci-fi space piracy first-person shooter. There's been some betas for this game, and they actually launched a new trailer just a mere month ago, but unfortunately, after its most recent beta, they've now shuttered the project. What's worse here, though, is that one of the repercussions is that Creative Assembly is now facing layoffs. That's something you never want to hear. There is a very real life component to this type of news when people are losing their jobs and, and, and that's something that I certainly don't wish to happen to anybody. I hope everybody bounces back on their feet as soon as possible and, and I actually do like this studio. Uh, Creative Assembly is behind some pretty good games such as the Total War series and, and also Alien Isolation. That's actually one of my favorite horror games from last generation. Definitely go check that game out if you haven't already. Now, the reason that Hyenas is being canceled, though, is a part of a bigger problem over at Sega. This is not the only game that was impacted. They also canceled some other unannounced projects. Uh, but like I said, this leads us to another publisher because Epic Games, the same day, they also laid off a large, significant part of their staff as well. In fact, they laid off 16% of their employees, and it's estimated that that's around 900 people. So, I mean, you're talking about a workforce that can make up multiple AAA studios, and, you know, that is an issue right now with live service games. You look at something like Fortnite, and, it, you know, it's one of the biggest games in the world, but it also takes a lot of people to continue its constant support, and it appears that they've kind of hit a breaking point. They've hit a wall, and they're now having to dial things back. Let's take a look at what Tim Sweeney from Epic Games had to say on the matter, though. Uh, he said, For a while, we've been spending way more money than we earn, investing in the next evolution of Epic and growing Fortnite as a metaverse-inspired ecosystem for creators. I had long been optimistic that we could power through this transition without layoffs, but in retrospect, I see that this was unrealistic. While Fortnite is starting to grow again, the growth is driven primarily by creator content with significant revenue sharing, and this is a lower margin business than we had when Fortnite Battle Royale took off and began funding our expansion. Success with the creator ecosystem is a great achievement, but it means a major structural change to our economics. So basically, they've, they've kind of hit a wall here, and, and now they need to scale back their plans, and, and, and that's a big question mark for all of these live service games going forward. I think for anybody making their own live service game, they have to be looking at this and taking notes. If one of the biggest live service games in the world can't manage that many employees, then yeah, we probably shouldn't either. You can't grow that fast. But again, that takes us back to the initial problem. You need a large staff to kind of manage all of these different moving parts when it comes to a live service project. You gotta handle the content creator side of things. You gotta handle the, the consistent content that a live service project needs. That's important for these type of games. So these companies, they need to find a good balance between workforce and consistent content for players. Unfortunately though, it sounds like the studio most impacted by these layoffs was Mediatonic, and this is a really sad story. This is the studio behind Fall Guys, which in my opinion is actually one of the most fun and unique takes on the Battle Royale genre. It, I actually like this game myself. This is something that me and my daughter has greatly enjoyed together, uh, but its future is kind of in question right now. Mediatonic was reportedly hit very hard with these layoffs, and, and one of the reasons that this story is so sad is because this is just two years after Epic Games acquired them and turned Fall Guys into a free-to-play title. So to see them do all that and then to lay off a large portion of the staff, it, it's just a sad situation. Now, if you are a fan of Fall Guys, though, Epic Games remains adamant that it will remain a priority for them going forward. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it is another live service project that has major question marks for the time being, and... You know, th this was previously a very successful game. It's had a couple big launches, actually. First on PlayStation, then here recently on Xbox, there was uh, some changes with the game, and it seemed to have this big revival. But uh, here it seems like it's facing some very serious issues, and, and, and that's starting to become a common occurrence when it comes to these live service games really across the entire industry. I mean, this is not the first time that we've talked about troubled and canceled live service projects. Now, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know... 
I've been talking about this for years. Live service games, they are incredibly, incredibly risky. I keep talking about this. All these studios, they want to produce these cash cows that gives them this huge influx of money for years and years to come. But that's also the reason that I call them mythical cash cows. There's no guarantee that you're actually going to see that influx of cash. And actually, it seems like it's more likely that they're going to flop and fail. See, there's a major flaw with how these companies are going about their business. I think the first big problem is player retention, and I think that that's one of the issues that Epic Games is currently having with games like Fall Guys. Even if you have a lot of success initially, how do you continue to have that success going forward? How do you continue to make sure that that game makes a lot of money? That way you can support the workforce that is working on that game. The bigger issue that I think most other games have, though, especially new games, is, is really just differentiating themselves. How do you stand out in a competitive environment like this? Gamers only have so much time to spare, and I, I think that's one of the biggest issues here just because I think most people who like these type of games have already found their home, you can kind of say. So in other words, all of these companies are fighting over the same group of players, and I, I think that that right there is why there's just a few super successful live service games, and then the rest, they just kind of die within like a year, or just get canceled before they even release. There's just a lot of problems with these type of games, and, and if I could give these companies any suggestions whatsoever, and I know they don't really care what I have to say, but if there is one thing that I could recommend, it would really just to be to make something unique. The reason I think games like Fall Guys, Rainbow Six Siege, Rocket League, and, and something like Sea of Thieves has found success is, is because they stand out, whereas a lot of these other games, they're just generic shooters, and, and those fans have already found a home. So... I don't know. I, I think after yesterday, first off, my heart goes out to all of the hard workers that were impacted. I, it's just a terrible thing to kind of have to talk about. But yeah, yeah, there's there's definitely some serious questions for these live service games going forward. And I, I think that that has increasingly become clear throughout 2023. Now, I, t I talked about that a little bit longer than what I thought I was going to. I do apologize for that. But uh, continuing on, according to a new rumor, we might be able to narrow down the release date for Gears of War 6. Now, this was spotted over on ArtStation, where a senior concept artist claims that the Coalition is working on an unannounced project that will release in 2026. So everybody's immediately jumping to the conclusion that this could be referring to Gears of War 6, which, I mean, it, it very much could be. Now, to be fair, considering no name was actually dropped, this could also be a completely new IP. Uh, it's hard to 100% be certain one way or the other. Uh, though there was a report earlier this year that they canceled the new IP that they were previously working on. So with that in mind, Gear 6 does appear to be the most likely candidate here. And if that is the case, this is a pretty large gap between Gears of War 5 and Gears of War 6. Gears 5, I mean, that launched back in 2019. So, I mean, we're talking seven years here if it doesn't launch until 2026. Now, maybe that's because they were working on those new IP for a while, or it could also be explained just because they're making some big changes. It was actually just about a month back that Nick Baker over on the Xbox Era podcast claimed that he had been hearing that Gear 6 is going to take the next big step in the franchise. According to him, he's been hearing that it might be a more open world style of game. Now, Gears 5, it did kind of explore that idea a little bit. There was some more open-ended environments to kind of explore and drive around in. So, you know, this is not necessarily an impossible rumor. The Coalition has slowly been introducing their new ideas to the Gears series, and, and, and they could take another big step in that direction. I, I think that that is plausible at the very least. Now, I do have a hard time picturing how an open world style of game would work in Gears of War. Uh, maybe it's just more open and not necessarily completely open world. We'll kind of see about all that, but he did also note that Gear 6 is further along than what some people might expect. So that does kind of contradict the art station post, and, and that is something important to keep in mind as well. My take on this, and, and this really is for both rumors, just take them with a grain of salt. If you don't know this about me, I'm a huge Gears fan myself. It's a top three franchise for me of all time, arguably number one. It holds a very, very special place in my heart. So coming from me, I just want them to take their time and make a good game, and, and that's the big part of this. The Coalition, they're a mastermind when it comes to Unreal Engine, and I want to see what they manage to do with Unreal Engine 5 and Gears of War 6. That is going to be pretty incredible to see, uh, but in the meantime, I, I'd really just take all of these as nothing more than rumors. 
Now, one last quick update here. Sonic Superstars will be out next month on October 17th, and if you are considering the Switch version, I do have some great news for you because it's now been confirmed that it will be 60 frames per second on the Nintendo Switch, or at least according to his producer. Now that's pretty amazing to hear because I think Sonic is a great fit for the Switch. I think that that will be a popular choice among fans and, and to see it at 60 frames, that's pretty relieving to hear, I'd have to say. I mean, it's a brand new game and it's also running at a higher frame rate than uh, Metal Gear Solid 1. Hey, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, but honestly, Sonic Superstars looks fantastic in my opinion. Uh, the only problem that I have with this game is that I really, really don't like its release date. It makes zero sense on why they would release this just days before Mario Wonder. I don't get it, but it is what it is. I just hope that this game succeeds because it really does look great. Let's go take a look at the poll of the day. We're asked you all, do you think Sony's increased focus on live service games will pay off? And only 9% of you said yes. So yeah, I think that that kind of tells you everything that you need to know. Fans are having a hard time getting excited for these live service experiences, and that also includes Sony, and I get it. The thing for me is that I'm honestly okay with Sony making live service games. I don't have a problem with that in its own. If they do have a successful hit, it'll be a big thing for the company, and who knows? Maybe they have something unique and fun up their sleeves. Well, only time will kind of tell with all that. Uh, where I disagree with Sony, though, is with them putting more of their focus on live service games than their single player. Right now, their plan is to have 60% of their focus on live service and then 40% on single player, and to me, that's a strange strategy. I mean, I understand that they're trying to throw as many of these games at the walls as they can in the hopes that at least one of them sticks, but as a fan of PlayStation, I can't help but believe that a large portion of that budget should have instead been pumped into brand new single-player experiences considering, hey, that's what their fan base loves PlayStation for in the first place. So to me, I think a 70-30 split that favors single player would have been much, much better, especially for your fans, and, and, and for that matter, it would have been the safer direction to take. I mean, it really just all kind of depends if they do have success, but as we just talked about earlier, live service is incredibly risky, and I, I think that that's one of the reasons that there is just so much skepticism about Sony's focus on these type of games. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget about the notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.